So, ladies and gents, uh, we are almost the end of uh, semester. Anyway, switch off the beamer. I hope this is the beamer. Good. Uh, anyway, we are approaching to the end of the semester and uh, in two weeks time we start the exam period. Therefore, necessary to repeat some elementary information concerning successful taking of exam. It's perfect. Okay, have to wait a little bit. Uh, I turn to back to the first slide series. On the first slide series, in the first occasion, I told to you which are the protocol of taking successful manual exam, fundamental information about the course. The first this is a lecture. We can realize it's true, it, it was a lecture. The second one, value of this lecture, free credit, some context is possible for, but generally free credits. Uh, not mandatory. <laughs> we are seeing recently it's not mandatory. It's a minority studies time by time. But uh, I take into uh, consideration if somebody uh, participates uh, uh, quite regularly uh, my weapon in this kind that uh, this is the list of participants. Uh, okay, I repeat. How we can take, not me, basically you, take the, this, this exam? Uh, type of exam, written exam. Written exam, no personal why, why written exam? Because uh, a little bit much easier to write. Why? Because we are learning English, majority only one exceptional person, who, native speaker, we as foreign language, uh, which is the focus of education. Grammatical structure, learning the words. Therefore, uh, paradoxically, we generally we are able to communicate in written manner much easier. Uh, it's not a grammatical exam. Therefore, I not I, I don't want to correct a grammatical fault and mistake. It's not taken into consideration. Basically, I focusize to information, written exam. Uh, moreover, very important to see, to compare, to check, to control the result. If, for example, you discuss the result of exam, it's a very easy situation. We can take the content of the written exam. It's not so tragical because if you would like to repeat, I will repeat all of that uh, at the end of today's lecture because probably a uh, lot of students will arrive a little bit later, okay? Uh, anyway, uh, if you would like to repeat the written exam, it's possible. Once, two, three times and, and a lot of times. Until the end of exam period. Exam period started two weeks time, uh, 22nd May, and will close at the beginning of July. Uh, questions which you would like to write some kind of answer, three definitions, and two short essays. But according to tradition of American and English uh, education, uh, I will offer, in the case of short essay, four options. Four options, but you have to select only two. In the case of definition, no option. Each of question you have to write answer. But in the case of short essay, there is an option. It's very important tradition of English education. In the exam situation, necessary to offer option for the students. Okay. Um, personal evaluation, I will send for each student via call space. In the call space, there is a main function. Why? Because it's a personal evaluation. And uh, it's, it's private offer for everybody evaluation. I will wait one day. One day is 24 hours. If somebody won't answer or agree, I register to new 
educational system is named Neptune. Uh, if somebody discusses, it's possible a personal consultation or repeat the exam. And the my offer, I will register to the educational electronic system the best one, the best grade. Okay. Uh, preparation for exam. Preparation for exam, regular participation on the course. Uh, and each of my lectures, I record it uh, without records. If somebody would like to enjoy uh, my performance at home during the weekend, it's possible. Uh, have to bring one uh, hard disk, movable hard disk, and I copy freely, no, no fee. Free, free uh, first, the second one, documents. Uh, today I loaded up readers, reading materials. If somebody would like to read, it's possible. Eight reading materials I loaded up to CoSpace. You can download and read of it. And the final possibility, you uh, checking a uh, list of expected questions and no option, no information about uh, for answer and may ask personal consultation electronically, personally or ask a consultation there. Basically, these are the frame of, uh, of, uh, of uh, preparation for exam. Okay. Somebody has a question about basic... Okay, the last information. Next week, on the time of lecture, there is a possibility for writing exam. It's not, it's not formal, informal date of taking exam. Why? Because basically a lot of Erasmus students would like to travel back to the home country and therefore hurry for taking exam. This is the first of by, but I ask everybody who will write in the following week the exam, register some official day. It was a lot of misunderstanding that wrote the exam and ask register me to the electronic call system. No, I can't register if not registered some official day of exam. Okay, uh, my offer was, I, last occasion, two weeks ago, I told to you each week at least one exam day I will register, but if possible, choose. Okay? So, start today material. Uh, I have a question that uh, is short. It says how long should it take? It's, it's a Basically, more than five sentences. Because the upper limit, upper limit of uh, definition, like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, short as say, generally, it's dependent on the size of, of characters, but one page, one and a half page, basically. In, yeah, but I have a friend who the smallest character is 10 centimeter. Not able to write to a normal uh, A4 sheet, only four centimeters, four lines. Yeah, it's dependent on the characters. Because somebody is very tiny characters, right? It's, it's possible more than half pages, one complete, it's a short essay. It's different. Yeah, yeah. But then, In sentences? For example, five sentences, ten sentences? More, 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 more. Ten sentences. Around ten, ten to fifty sentences. But the structure of sentences is different. <laughs> yeah, therefore, no, no final receipt. One page, one and a half page, generally, with some kind of information. Uh, and the exams will be only on Wednesdays or during the exam period, only on Wednesdays or other days of the week? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, today, tomorrow, I have a day for the organizer of the exam. Uh, unfortunately, the other system, it's named ETR, I, it familiarized. But the new one, I know information I opened once. 
post. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's uh, dangerous using a, a new system. Because, like for example, walking on the city. If somebody on the, on the first crossroads turned right, wrong direction, lost every uh, information and every chance for finding the good way. And therefore, yeah, coming. Uh, therefore, uh, you have to wait a little bit. And uh, next week the first occasion for taking exam and uh, after official exam period one day. But it's possible an uh, extraordinary situation. If somebody no time, uh, take the personal contact and we can find a date for that, personal date. It's not a good job for me, but uh, it's possible, it's possible. My interest taking exam successfully. And your interest, I suppose. Say. Okay, so I close the door. In the last week, we started the last item of the formation of the vertical army system. It's a national market. <coughs> the crucial question of last occasion was how up here the first national market in Europe. A basic question, according to Fernand Rodol, how the economic coherence achieved with a given political unit? It's a basic question. Why? Because if we are looking at uh, empires, like Mongolian Empire, like, for example, British Empire, like Hungarian Empire, it's not a national country, it's empire with a lot of different culture, a lot of different religion, a lot of different nation. It's empire. It's not coherent. Existed, it's coherent unit inside of the frame. Wrapped the fur networks and the market uh, uh, system. Sorry, but there is a problem with the computer. Uh, the basic question, how unify a national state a national market? Uh, okay, uh, spatial hierarchy, we are over in the last week, uh, five uh, ladder, step of ladder in Europe in the spatial hierarchy. The smallest one, the marriage district. The second one, city and the region. The, free, the third, the country. Country, it's uh, not a real country, uh, but a, a larger than the, than the uh, county, but smaller than the province. Uh, the fourth provinces, which were the most important territorial unit of traditional age. Why? Because the provinces no larger, some 10,000 square kilometers, and possible with the traditional devices efficient communication. Sending, for example, riders to other corner of the, of the province. If possible, not necessarily more than four or five days. Go and the back, it's possible, efficient communication. But even, even in the, unfortunately here, this is the territorial state, even in the traditional time existed territorial states, which were very large, very difficult to direct, and time by time change the size. For example, there is a French student in the audience, French student, no? France, for example, some periods, only 300,000 square kilometers, and recently, more than 600,000 kilometers. It's changed. Shrunk grew, shrunk grew. It's in territorial state, it's a normal situation. Okay. Uh, this was the last one. Territorial state and the national markets, how changed in the, in the history. Uh, which, were, which was and which were the most important economic sector of territorial state and the city-state. Uh, in the case of city-state, uh, the, there are three sectors. Uh, there are students of economics uh, uh, know well this uh, uh, standards of description of economy. First, industry, second, agriculture, and the first, a, a service. 
a mercantilism, which was the, the, the most important uh, the policy of economics uh, in the 70s and the early uh, 80th century, uh, tried to uh, organize somehow a surplus. According to Lionel Rothkran definition, mercantilism, transfer of control of economic activity from the local community, like city, and the city-state to whole of the state. Okay, look at the structure of traditional economy. If we are looking, for example, according to, uh, uh, according to person of, uh, of workers, uh, a different sector. Look at, for example, this is the Danish uh, economy. It's not the most developed, it's a medium, mediocre. Uh, agriculture, agriculture took a job for uh, a little bit more than 40% of Danish uh, population. Uh, a little bit more than 20% unskilled work, laborers basically. For example, harvesters some period and uh, day workers other period. Unskilled work. Recently existed unskilled work. It's much smaller proportion. Uh, if we are looking at craft and the manufacture, artisan basically, artisan and servant around the artisans. It's uh, approximately more than 10 percent, according to proportion of workers. Uh, others, it's maybe uh, sailor or, or, or not identified job. Uh, commerce, a uh, proportion of merchant, it's a little bit more than 5 percent. And fishing and shipping, uh, a little bit less or, or, or the same than commerce. Which is the first impression? about the job structure of Danish society. Dominating agriculture and unskilled work. Unskilled work, partly agricultural work, partly industrial work, partly service. It's very difficult to define one third each of these uh, sectors. But look at the money economy. Money economy. How many persons of economic activity take into the cash flow. Look at it. In the case of agriculture, 100% of all of the value which produced by peasant, only approximately 10% of agrarian products took into the cash flow. Commercialized as named in the economics. Fishing and shipping, in the case of fishing and shipping, shipping a little bit uh, higher, double compared with the agriculture, approximately 15 percent. Much higher the proportion of commercialized part of products. But look at the craft of manufacture, manu manufacture and commerce. 100 percent. In the cash flow, in the money economy, dominating a minority of the workers. It's very important, the peculiarity of traditional economy. Okay, time by time, in the frame of territorial state, try to integrate, try to integrate. The first try of integration performed in France. It's named saint gros Firm. It's five great provinces. Colbert, it's possible you, name, you know his name, he was one of the greatest economy and politician uh, of the uh, 17th century, tried to integrate somehow the French economy. Therefore, organized around Paris a tax-free area. Why? Accelerate economic activity. Try to without success. <coughs> Finally, it's performed without uh, breaking out from the uh, from the uh, from the cap of traditional economy. But try. Very important. Very important. Back uh, uh, if it's possible. Former time I, I, I spoke about in the traditional society. No boundary. No well-defined boundary between states. I spoke about it probably. 
the first control of territorial state appeared in Spain. In Spain, between France, somewhere here, somewhere here, sorry, between Spain and France, in the mountain area of Pyrenees. The first guarded boundary of, between the state appeared in Pyrenees. The second one, Austria, uh, later France, uh, in consequence of the French Revolution, fortified the guarding of the boundary. And the uh, next one, that is before the 18th century, no boundary control. Look at France. If we are looking at the great territorial state of uh, modern time, two great territorial states dominated, France and England. Look at the rivalry of France of Eng and England. If we are looking at uh, uh, France and the French nation, France and the French nation define uh, Femme Brother, the, the first political, first modern uh, nation in political terms. If we are looking at France, as I mentioned, the size of the country, historical period by period change. One period, for example, a Middle Ages, High Middle Ages, only half of recent size. Recently, 647,000 uh, uh, square kilometers. But in the Middle Ages, was half of that. Uh, France, in uh, history and uh, historical geography, named two, uh, named two Hexen. Why? Because if we are looking at the form of the France, it's very similar to the Hexen with geometrical forms. Sorry about that. If we are looking at France, uh, a French historian defined according to economic sense uh, France was a victim of gigantism. Do you somebody listen about the word mean to gigantism? It's a giant, something became a giant. It's possible you uh, play a strategical game, for example, in Hungarian uh, game The Conqueror. Hungarian student home, sorry, Hungarian in home for global. It's a strategical game. For example, have to organize army, occupy area. If you successfully conquer a new area, receive uh, income, organize larger army, and so on and so forth. France demonstrate exactly the strategy of traditional world. The largest country, whole of Europe, definition of Europe different from the recent definition. In the historical early modern, until the end of early modern time, uh, Russia wasn't a part of Europe. Russia became a part of Europe only after the age of enlightenment, 18th century. Before enlightenment, largest country, whole of the Europe, France. And the nature of France, a little bit the same, like in the modern time, recent time, France. What we mean? For example, look at the population of Hungary in the modern, early modern time. Four million. Look at the population of England. Six million. Population of Spain. Six million. This is the normal dimension of Europe. Look at France. Population of France in the 17th century, 70 million up. This is the largest country. Moreover, the largest one in the size of territory. Look at, for example, in the Second World War, Russia or Soviet Union so large, not possible to occupy. This is the same true in the case of France 
in the Middle Ages and the early modern. So large, it's not possible to occupy. A lot of rulers tried. For example, uh, Charles V, Emperor of Holy Roman Empire, tried to occupy. No. Why? It's not success. Why? Because too large country and the dimension of army, some 10,000 soldiers, not enough occupa occupation all of the country. Therefore, in the traditional time, France was the Russia of Europe. Larger population, larger area, compared with any other. Uh, how formed the recent form of France? The first milestone, the Hundred Years War. Probably you remember the Hundred Years War. It's a long war between France and England. And change the success, change the uh, efficiency of the France and, and the uh, French and the English army. But finally, after taking to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, how the name is, uh, uh, taking to the, how the, the theater, how the name is uh, the, uh, uh, the surface of theater. Stage. Stage, thanks a lot. Uh, stepping into the stage by Jean d'Arc, turned the success and English army, which was the mercenary army, lost almost all of the French uh, dominated, uh, uh, English dominated French uh, uh, provinces. And the modern France appeared and formed after the uh, Hundred Years War. It's closed in the middle of the uh, 15th century. The second milestone, Habsburg Valois Empire. Uh, Charles V, uh, who I mentioned, uh, tried to occupy tried to reorganize the Roman Empire, Holy Roman Empire, and try to occupy, try to conquer large part of uh, France. Somebody know which was the most important uh, uh, province of uh, France, which would like to occupy by uh, Charles V. Essas. Essas. It's very interesting. Somebody know in which century happened the first war between Germany and France for Alsace? Because this was the uh, Casus Belli uh, in the case of the uh, First and Second World War and the War of, uh, of Unification of France. In which century? In which century? Alsace it's, uh, uh, it's multicultural and multilingual province between France and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Germany. In which century? You have to mention one number. Nine. No? Before. Nine. Nine. In the ninth century, in the ninth, uh, ninth century, organized the first war for occupation of... It's, it's long history. One, one thousand years before the Second World War, and before the unification of Germany, organized a war for occupation of Alsace. It was the separation of uh, Frank Empire's time, uh, exactly in uh, 814. This was the date of first war for Alsace. Okay, Hapsburg Valois Wars, uh, it's closed with equal position, and the last milestone, a French Civil War. And after the French Civil War, formed the large country, the largest country, all of the contemporary Europe, and four direction of this country organized a new form of state, its name absolute state. What means the absolute state? No control above the king. The king, for example, sometimes 40 years, 10 years, 20 years, didn't call the, the members of, uh, of uh, uh, state general without any official, official parliamentary control uh, to uh, and organize and govern the state. 
Okay, look at France. Uh, look at the territory. Uh, 30 times larger compared compare with Netherlands. Netherlands during the Golden Age in the 17th century dominated all of the world. And according to territory, 30 times larger. Four times larger compared with England. 40 times more rebel land, agrarian territory, uh, has inside of France compared with Netherlands. Look at the population. In the case of population, 10 times compared with the Dutch population, five times compared with the English population. Which was the problem of the gigantism? Uh, basic problem of the gigantism, France reached the upper limit of territorial expansion. No efficient possibility of communication between Paris and Marseille, between Paris and La Rochelle. Too large, too large the country. Uh, but according to large size of the country, didn't possible to occupy. Do you know probably uh, there, there are students of uh, Faculty of Economics? Okay, uh, do, uh, do you know uh, this is a, a classical example, uh, uh, pitfall of, uh, of uh, corner, uh, corner profit, pitfall of corner profit? No? It's a general conception of, uh, of economics, for example, a mountain area, for example, a mountain area taken into uh, uh, cultivation, first step in the valley area. The productivity is very high, but increase the population, therefore try to occupy the slope, Piedmont area, and the higher area. But the profit, the benefit, decrease. And after some limit, the efforts, value of efforts, higher than the benefit. And this is the problem, the pitfall of corner, uh, corner benefits, co limits, it's different definition. And France fell into this pitfall. Why? Because the logic of organization of traditional state, occupy new country, occupy new provinces, occupy, 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 conquer, and after some size, didn't possible govern, direct, ruling, efficiently. Expire, expire the benefit. Higher the expenses of direction, occupation and, and government, then income from fee and taxes. So, if we are looking at uh, the communication, uh, communication line of France, even in the century of enlightenment, we can see that in the middle of the uh, 18th century, the communication between Paris, it's centralized country. It's very, very uh, have, uh, efficient, not efficiently, but heavily centralized country. Communication line between Paris and Marseille, 12 days go and 12 days back. Therefore, no possibility, but this is the quickest, quickest moment. Right, right, soldier, officer. Go and back. And with carriage and by food, much slower. Therefore, no possibility of the efficient direction. The situation a little bit improved to the dawn of the uh, uh, French Revolution, eight days, eight days, with the best devices, and eight days back. Two weeks' time, the communication now. Uh, moreover, in the case of France, there were two capitals, not only one, two capitals. One political capital, Paris, and economic capital, Lyon. Somebody visited in Lyon yet? Lyon? It's southern country. It's located in the southern country of France. 
Uh, very interesting, if we are looking at the hexagon in France, there are different regionalization. The traditional regionalization are limits and the boundary we can draw here. This is the Atlantic country, it's oriented to the Atlantic Ocean, and the other one, a Mediterranean country, oriented to the Mediterranean trade. Atlantic country is focused to Paris, and the Mediterranean country focused to Rio. Uh, basically, Lyon connected to Mediterranean trade. It was, according to some contemporary uh, opinion, this was the headquarter of Mediterranean trade. But I call your attention. During the modern time, in consequence of geographical discoveries, in consequence of appearance of international trade based on Atlantic Ocean, the value of Mediterranean trade is devaluated. Therefore, in the capital, Lyon devaluated too. And Paris wasn't able to take up economic position. Okay, if we are looking at the economic gravity center of France, we can separate well uh, Atlantic and Mediterranean countries. It's quite balanced. Quite balanced is Lyon and this is the Rome. Rome it's outskirts of Paris. Paris not able to appear here. If you are looking at the commercial balance of Paris and Lyon, Lyon is a normal, normal uh, city. Exports, it's quite a high value, import the lower. This is the sign of mercantilism. Why? Which is the uh, main strategy of mercantilism? It's positive balance. Higher import than export, it's positive balance. According to Colbert, Probably you know this name. French Minister of uh, Finance and uh, Prime Minister, Robert. His uh, basic principle is uh, positive commercial balance. Therefore, he had to support uh, uh, internal industrial investment and everything inside of the country and have to support the export with help of uh, supporting and, and, uh, and uh, how the name is uh, uh, how the name the strategy of uh, uh, economic strategy of uh, of uh, supporting the internal investment and internal economy protection uh, 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 economic protection uh, push the economic activity into the direction of, uh, of, uh, of uh, positive uh, commercial balance. In the case of Lyon, we can follow uh, uh, excellent model. It's very high uh, proportion of, uh, of export. Somebody know which was the most important industrial activity of, uh, of Lyon? Somebody know? Which industry dominated? Silk industry. It's a luxury. It's a luxury textile industry. Okay? Uh, not by chance, export high value of silk industry. Uh, a little bit lower, much lower the import. Uh, and the total transaction and the gross balance is very impressive. Look at Paris. No production. Only each of consumption based on tax tax income. It's residential center of the country. No production. If we are looking at uh, geography regional per capita, we can see the same uh, sp spatial structure. Atlantic and Mediterranean uh, area. But we can see that even in the 18th century, on the time of enlightenment and in the modern time, this is the basic structure of spatial 
regional uh, economic uh, power of France. Northern Poles and Southern Poles, even in the 20th century. Uh, very interesting, a map before the, uh, before the French Revolution uh, about the literacy. If we are looking at the literacy, it's a capacity for writing, much higher in northern part of the country and much lower in the Mediterranean area. My question why? Why? much lower the literacy in Mediterranean France. Cheers. Because Donmar from the Loire, you know, River Loire, a lot of chateau constructed in, the, in this area. The native language was in France. No French speaker inhabitant lived in Mediterranean, Mediterranean France. Which language? Italian. No? No Spanish. Half of the France didn't speak French. If uh, somebody, for example, read uh, the novel of, of uh, uh, Dumas, the free 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 and which was the most important problem of Dardanelle, who came from Gascon. Gascon located somewhere here. Which language? No France, no French. Oak and Provence. Oak. Languages? No? New Latin languages, like a French, but basically different, much closer to the original Latin. Then formed a France, a lot of different languages existed. My question how expired these languages, which spoke more people than French? It's recently nobody. Speaking Oc, uh, one Provence saved his name, Occitan, it's possible. And Provence, this other Provence. Two different languages. How expired? Because of French nationalism. But with it, French nation, nationalism is a generalization. How perfect? Like uh, to unify the old people uh, based on the central How language. language. Which is the most efficient devices of unification? Assimilation. Language. Language, but how able to popularize the languages? They had to learn uh, French to go to school, for example. Army and civil bureaucracy. In army, ordering language French. Civil bureaucracy necessary to know French. And started the unification of, uh, of country at the beginning of 16th century, before appearance of nationalism. Gas. Gas. The same situation, similar situation, happened in, even in Central Europe. Uh, there is a Czech student, Czech student, Czech, Czechia, no? In Czechia, in the 18th century, half of population spoke German, half Czech. Not by chance, probably you know the name of uh, Franz Kafka. Franz Kafka. 
Franz Kafka lived in Prague, he said. And he wrote his novel in German. It's very exceptional. It's a part of Czech literature. But the language is a German. In Czechia, Bohemia is named in the uh, traditional age. The Czech nation, the Czech population of Czechia, it's between the change of language. And it's possible I, I spoke about it at the uh, former time. And in the, at the end of 18th century, Czech intellectual decided that war into the size of Czech language. A lot of Czech intellectual, native speaker, German. Learn back to Czech. Why? For nationalism. It's a high value of language. In the traditional time, no special value of language. One, one element of identity, but no key element of identity. It's very easy manner in the traditional, traditional age change a language. Not only one person, larger community to a tribe, a clan, change language. <coughs> Uh, and the success of Czech language, that the change of language between German and, and Czech uh, happened on the, at the dawn of nationalism. Because in the point of view of nationalism, the most important element of integration inside of the community, language, common language and common culture. But before that, no, in the case of uh, France assimilation happened in the traditional age. No defense, no self-defense of local population. If somebody would like to take a job in army or civil bureaucracy, had to change language, assimilate. And the southern France assimilated. And recently, only a small dialect saved the heritage. But the same situation happened in Scotland, which is the name, which is the language of the Scottish people, not Gaelic, which is the language of Irish people, no Celtic Gaelic, but English, English because assimilated before appearance of nationalism. Okay, turn back to the story. And why low level of literacy? Because the students of the, and the pupils, when walk into the elementary school, the teacher speak on foreign language, not able to communicate, and falling out from education. Why? Because uh, you can imagine, if, for example, uh, if a uh, recent country, if somebody living in a minority state, like, for example, Hungary, Samaria, gypsy population, Hungarian minority, Romania or, or Slovakia, much lower intellectual performance. Why? Because education language, a foreign language, and there is a gap, a language gap in the first step of education. Okay, turn back to the story. Uh, basically, a uh, difference between literacy no indicator of intellectual capacity, but an uh, indicator of different language. Okay, population density, like uh, economic performance, two poles, uh, southern poles around Lyon, and the northern poles around the Atlantic France. Uh, very interesting living standards, uh, it's uh, living standards in 18th century, not by chance, these are the poor provinces. Why? Because the official French policy and the politics favorized the real France. A real France. Real France is the modern France. But very interesting, even now, if you travel to France, there is a very important difference in southern and northern identity. If somebody came from northern France, it's a real, right, for example, in the German history, a Prussian, a Prussian, the real German. In the case of France, the real French is a northern French. 
And the southern French are the only the second class, the second class. Uh, okay, the basic conclusion in the case of France, why wasn't able to concentrate and to move the central area of global economy to France, a French state and the French uh, uh, actor of French economy, too large the country, this is the first problem, too large the country, not able to organize and direct and govern the uh, leader, political and economic leader of the country. First reason. The second reason, two capital. Two capital which were in rivalry. Lyon and Paris. Lyon and Paris. And destroyed the forces. No, didn't possible focusize the living energy of the country. Look at English territorial state. Other uh, rivals. If we are looking at England, <coughs> a uh, very important uh, geography of British Isle. British Isle, ideal for economic integration. Very long coastal area. Moreover, a lot of well navigable, sorry, navigable rivers. The most important is the Thames, of course. If we are looking at the British Isle, a uh, larger and a smaller one, uh, Irish uh, Isle, uh, 245,000 square kilometers. Whole of the British Isle, much low, much smaller compared with the France. And if we focus size to the size of English country, English country, it's optimal, optimal for governing 130,000 square kilometer, the size of English okay. state. Very important. The function of La Manche, La Manche, or the channel. La Manche is the French name of the channel, of course. Why? Because the channel able, like a floating barber, able to save, like a shield, uh, any continental invasion. It's very important. Uh, two countries are, it's possible I mentioned former time, which mention we are traveling to Europe. <coughs> separate itself from Europe, two countries in, in Europe, two European countries separate themselves from European identity. The first one, England. If somebody from English people travel to France, I travel to Europe, it's separate. Which is other? Portugal? No, Portugal. It's true, but it's a consequence of, uh, of English tradition. It's copied. Of, because in Portugal, a uh, close connection, close connection to England, it's, it's same fashion. Portugal is true, but it, Russian. Russian. It's very important. Russia became a part of Europe, but separate somehow. It's every day's communication too. If somebody, for example, Saint Petersburg, travel to Prague, I travel to Europe. It's different. It's different. Uh, very important, uh, a backbone of the country, a Pennine mountain, but not so high, not so high, uh, the highest one a little bit higher than 1,000 kilometers. It's a quite a sloppy uh, area. Okay, look at how became England an island. Originally, geographical is an island, but historically not. Why? Because during the Middle mid Ages, English king had uh, control large area of continental area, mainly from France. Why? Because a lot of dynasty came from France. First one, a uh, Norman dynasty. Uh, William the Conqueror, first one. Later, Anjou dynasty came from France. And of course, king of Anjou, Dynasty ruled and 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 all the whole provinces too. Therefore, no separating French king and English king, but French 
an English thing controls a different mixture of English, France, province aggregation. Oh, the French king, some period, who was a king of Scotland, and English king was the ruler of Anjou or some period uh, Provence. And it's a very complicated situation, but in the Middle Ages it was a normal. Uh, different legal relation, uh, a, a, a very complicated situation created uh, in the feudalism. Therefore, uh, for example, some period, uh, a French king, some connection, for example, in the case of Provence, was a landlord of French king, of English king. But other relation, an English king was a landlord of the French king. It's very confused, but in the feudal world, it was a normal situation. Which are conclusion? In the Middle Ages, no France and no England. A mixture, mixture of different provinces. But this period closed the hundred years war. Why? Because the English connection pushed out from the continental area. The first loss of the second, because the, some other hundred years war happened in the uh, high Middle Ages. But late Middle Ages, uh, hundred years war lost by England. The last uh, last uh, uh, position, continental position, Calais. Calais, this is a, a, a uh, coastal city in the part of, uh, of uh, La Marche Channel. Uh, 50,000, uh, 50, uh, 58, recaptured by Francois de Guise, uh, Prince, of, uh, uh, Prince of France. Uh, according to mention of Fernand Brodeau, uh, as I try to describe uh, on the table, in England acted as a province or a group of provinces within the Anglo-French unit, which was in its entirety. Uh, the next milestone, when England became an independent country, any continental connection, uh, English Reformation and formation of uh, Anglican Church. Uh, according to your opinion, uh, Henry VIII, why killed two of his wife and divorced finally five times? Why was so bad the relation with uh, women? Why? Because it's exceptional. Exceptional. He had eight, eight wives. No, six, sorry, not eight. six wives. And two of them killed, not personally, it's executed. Why? I heard that uh, he wanted sons, but uh, all those wives uh, uh, weren't uh, being uh, daughters. Yeah, he was a second, second uh, born uh, priest, yeah. uh, and uh, which was the official goal of his education. Which was the intention? Because the first born son, <coughs> prince, prince of Bath, and the king of, following king of, uh, of uh, kingdom. But he was a second. Yeah. He, which was the intention? Which child? Bishop. Bishop or later archbishop. Religious Henry, which is the key element of the religious character, celibacy. Do you know what means the celibacy? Everyone? Okay. And one day after the firstborn son died, had to step onto the place of Arthur and cancel the program. The new strategy, no celibacy, but had to had to, had to uh, reduce our, our followers. It's not, it's not easy, it's, it's a great, great problem for uh, great, it's 
uh, educational science define the rewriting problems. If somebody learns something, it's true, and try to cancel and load up a new version. The final relation is a lot of mistake, lot of mistake. Therefore, relation with the women is not the bad. But historically, it's a great chance because one reason and the unique reason of creation of reform in uh, Anglican Church, the Pope didn't want to make divorce. No any other reason. No any other reason. And if you compare the, for example, the, uh, the liturgy of Anglican and the Roman Catholic, tiny differences. Very, very. Which was the most important divorce from the uh, 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 bridegroom of, uh, of his uh, uh, older brother. But historically, this was the last connection which cut from the continental uh, connection itself, from Catholic Church. Okay, if we are looking at uh, the channel, it's a good uh, picture about this is a shield, its name historically floating barber between the continental area and, uh, and the island. Okay, uh, which, one, which were the consequences of, uh, of separation of England? The first improvement of lands. Why? Because lost the continental connection close to the island and inside of the island had to increase the Arabia land. Close spatial dimension, therefore invested a huge fortune to voter regulation, improvement of, uh, of fertility of rainbow land, and so and so. Improve the country, increasing rainbow lands. First, reclamation of forest, marshland area, herd area. The next step pushed the English uh, elite, the English uh, rulers, checking the control on the British island. Why? Because around England had three Celtic country, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. And the most important ambition since late Middle Ages, occupation and domination, these Celtic countries. And the next consequence of losing con continental connection, formation and national market inside of the island. And the most important consequence is the English economy, English politics turned toward colonial ambition. Lost the continental connection and turned over, construct a, a great colony network in America, in India, and in Africa. Very important, a uh, very special uh, mentality of English people. In the 16th century and even in the 17th century, the contemporaries described a bombarded fort fortress psychosis. We are alone. We are alone, and England, not in the time of 20th century, but even in the 16th century, it's a great fear for invasion. Came from the continent and invaded the country. Not uh, 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 totally uh, baseless, because it's possible uh, once in the 16th century, the Spanish fleet, uh, the Spanish army tried to uh, organize an invasion. Uh, without success. But very important in the English mentality, uh, a fear for continental invasion. And fear for continental invasion reinforced the formation of nationalism, formation of, of, of sense of community. Okay. Uh, contemporaries wrote about the uh, English mentality, for example, uh, a Sui ambassador of uh, French king, that English hate us. English people hate everybody who came from the continent, hate us, and with uh, a hatred so strong 
and so widespread uh, that one is tempted to number it among the natural disposition of these people. And other, uh, other French tra traveler, even in the uh, century of enlightenment, wrote the English consider their own pretensions as rights and the rights of their neighbors as usurpation. Okay, look at the consequence of these historical events. The first consequence is that uh, uh, English uh, rulers, politicians, and economic leaders try to save, try to protect the market. Italian merchant banker driven out in the last decades of the 16th century. Uh, Hanseatic merchant, it's a merchant of the Baltic Sea and the Baltic region, stripped out from the country until the end of the 16th century. Uh, formed a royal exchange, some form of the stock of exchange and the bank, uh, against domination of Antwerp, and uh, organized the stock companies uh, against Spain and Portugal, and the last one against Holland, act of navigation. If we look at these uh, orders and these uh, uh, rights, basically the most important ambition of English people in the 16th century organized a well-protected national market. Very important, this is the starting point of formation of, uh, of uh, uh, English national market. Great debasement. Great debasement happened uh, 1560 and 61, and performed the last Tudor queen, Elizabeth I, and Thomas Gresham. Thomas Gresham, uh, Minister of Finance uh, on that time in England, and uh, in consequence of great inflation of shilling, introduced a new currency. The new currency name on Sterling, which using recent very unbelievable, exceptional, whole of the history of currency of Europe, one currency introduced in the 16th century has used the same, not by chance that English uh, recently after the Brexit now uh, any relevance, but during the golden age of introduction of Europe, nobody would like to introduce to England. Why? Because the bond sterling introduced uh, uh, in the middle of uh, uh, middle of 16th century, look at how changed the value of pounds If we are looking any other European currency, up down, up down, except the pounds It's very odd basis of great recovery of English economy. Uh, other milestone which have to uh, mention foundation of Bank of England, uh, 16, eight, uh, 1694, which officially from the st size of state organized and saved the value of Einstein. <coughs> How changed the population? How changed the population? We have to recon four countries: England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. If we are looking at England and Wales, it's very difficult to separate because back, uh, England is uh, it's, uh, glued very closely uh, to the modern time to England. It's uh, quite dynamically increased, 2.5 to the beginning of uh, 19th century, uh, 9.2. Uh, increase of Scottish population, it's a peripheral, popula peripheral area, much slower, but the dynamism Irish population quite a half. If we are looking at a diagram of that, we can follow uh, quite easily. It's dominated the English population, but Irish population, uh, uh, even uh, 18th and 19th century, uh, grew very quickly. If we are looking at the London, population of London, in different calculations, but uh, when started the story, 70,000 uh, uh, inhabitants. But very quickly, to the beginning of, uh, of uh, to the beginning of uh, 17th century, uh, it's a tribe, the population, and to the middle of uh, 
17th century almost half million and to the middle of uh, uh, to the middle of uh, eight, uh, 19th century the largest uh, city whole of the world look at the proportion the great jump happened in consequence of industrial revolution we can evaluate from the beginning and to the middle of 19th century why interesting for us why interesting for us because for example in the middle of uh, in the middle of uh, uh, 17th century in the middle of 17th century 1650 population of england 6 million population of london half million it's a voter hat voter hat but not only the population focus size to the London, but each form of activity. Westminster, which is the function of the Westminster. State General, and Parliament, of course, and lodging of royal family. This is the presidential center, like Paris in the history of uh, uh, France. But city, which is the function of the city, stock of exchange, Bank of England, economic center, financial center, which located to Lyon. In the case of France, two capital. A rivalry be between the two capitals. In the case of London, no rivalry, reinforced one to other. And very important, the port, the harbor. Later I will show, this is the greatest harbor, all of the British Isle, and sulfur. Do you know what in the, which, which was the sulfur? <coughs> this is the district of entertainment. In this area, a lot of theaters, for example, in Southwark, located the Globe, Theater Globe. Who was the most important director and author of Globe? Shakespeare. Shakespeare, of course. But very interesting, a great tradition of the street theater. Street theater, not only the organized and the, and the stone built theater, a, theater, a street theater existed even in the 16th century. Probably you know the Monty Python. The Monty Python uh, staff and team. The Monty Python tradition started in the 16th century to the tradition of street theater. The Monty Python not a new invention. It's a, it's a line like a bunch turning since the beginning of the modern time. Okay, if looking uh, for example the harbor, compare the size of uh, free London or any other English country, English city dominated by London. Uh, if we are looking at the navigable uh, water base, we can realize before appearance of railway network, quite easy communicate via sea or uh, navigable waterway. Okay, look at the unification of Britain, of British Isles. The first milestone, Wales. Wales unified quite uh, uh, early in the uh, 12th century on the time of ruling years of Edward I. Once revolted and temporarily became independent Wales during the Hundred Years War on the time of Owen uh, Grindover revolt, but to the 16th century, Wales became a uh, unified province of, uh, of Britain, and not by chance, the heir of British crown, Prince of Wales, received the title of uh, Prince of Wales. But occupation and conquering one area not possible with the collaboration between the ruling and the local elite, and the Cassius Belli, the, the basis of collaboration, the export of uh, cattle to the market of London. 
A little bit same situation like happened in the history of Hungary. Hungary or Wales became uh, a stock of food uh, of, uh, of uh, capital. And uh, the profit of uh, export of cattle became the basis of collaboration of the uh, elite of Wales. Uh, look at the Scotland. If we are speaking about uh, very shortly and very uh, survey manner about the Scotland, we can separate uh, lowlands and highlands. In the lowlands area, it's assimilated very quickly to English language. In highlands area, say until the 20th century, are Gaelic dialects and very exceptional in the northeast part of uh, Scotland. One Danish, Danish from the Norman Viking period, one Danish dialect uh, survived until the beginning of 20th century. Uh, it's peripheral areas. Scotland, a very, very peripheral area, agrarian peripheral area. Moreover, this is the age of Little Ice Age. In former time, I spoke about it's a cold period. What is period for all of the human history? Not by chance, a lot of Scottish people emigrated to continental area, emigrated new colonies, and tried to organize somehow a trading companies, but bankruptcy uh, destroyed all each of the, each of that, and therefore a Scottish Parliament asked, not occupied, not conquered, Scottish Parliament asked the Union with England. Okay, and after the uh, uh, part of Union, uh, 77, England, uh, Scotland became a part of Great Britain. Look at Ireland. Ireland situation quite a special. Ireland uh, had a colonial status. Uh, British uh, uh, in England and the English king occupied and conquered England. Uh, and formed a truncated society. Truncated society means uh, a normal functional society like a pyramid. Majority of society present, 10 persons, 10 per 6 or 10 persons bourgeoisie, 1 to 5 persons nobility, and the ruler, king and aristocracy. But, after occupation of Ireland, uh, English Scottish elite cancelled upper part of Irish society, therefore created a truncated society. If somebody Irish, it's determined a social status visa and determined religion, Catholic. And between the upper part, Upper power, bourgeoisie, nobility, and aristocracy reformed Church, Anglican, or Protestant, <coughs> British or Scottish, speak, uh, spoke a different languages, and Irish people, Pisa, Catholic, and, uh, and uh, uh, how the name is. Uh, uh, underclass, uh, lived in underclass states. And the boundary between upper and lower part of society is unpassable. It's closed, totally closed situation. Uh, in Ireland, organized a double economy, upper economy with great states and export oriented agriculture, and the lower part is an Irish. Uh, dwarf estates and peasant society. But very interesting, Irish population increased very, very quickly. Why? Because it's a peasant society. In the peasant society, there is a self value of, uh, of uh, children, self mind. Because the, for the peasant, this is a, a handwork uh, capital, meaning uh, children. And majority of uh, Scottish English elite lived in city, urban population, and the fertility rate much lower. Therefore, it's very dynamic manner 
increase the population of Ireland. But a little bit better if we are looking at uh, the diagram. Irish population reached in the middle of the uh, uh, 18th century more than 8 million. In the 40s, reached, if possible, at the beginning of this course I spoke about uh, Irish potato famine. Do you know what I mean? Irish potato famine. Okay, uh, it's expired the time, but uh, uh, important to speak about. Um, Irish potato famine, nobody, nobody information about. Okay, Irish potato famine mean, uh, in the case, in the situation of truncated society, the normal uh, manner of production, European manner of agrarian production, focuses to wheat, barley, generally cereals. But, in the 18th century, the size of estate on the hand of peasant, Irish peasant, shrunk half hectare. Half hectare, hectare, not enough regular land for one family. Somehow had to solve this situation. Arrived the potato from Americas, carrying capacity of potato sixfold higher than anti-cellulose. Therefore, whole of Irish society changed to potato cultivation. It's launched a potato monoculture, but came from United States, not United States, America. General, central and southern part. But during the great geographical discovery, traveled not only people, animals, and plants, but epidemics too. And run one fungi epidemics, its name Picoflora infestans. It's fungi. Do you know what I mean? The fungi, three kinds of epidemics: uh, bacterial, uh, virus, and fungi. This is a fungi, and uh, arrived from Americas, like for example, Colorado bug, potato bug, right after the Second World War. It's happened a little bit earlier, and whole of the potato harvest it's rotten, and no solidarity, upper and lower part of the society. Therefore, 1.7 million Irish people disappeared. Half died and half emigrated to Scotland, to east coast of United States, to Australia. And if we are looking population of Ireland never reached the same level before the Irish potato family. It's, it's a disaster. It was a natural uh, disaster. Not by chance, relation between Irish people and English people, bad. Historical basis, very bad. Okay, this is the sculpture of, uh, of in the Dublin uh, of victims of uh, potato famines. Irish potato famine happened in that. Uh, fit of the infestants, I didn't remember the slide. Uh, it's uh, totally destroyed the uh, harvest. And basically, the epidemics which kill the people is typhus. Okay? Uh, financial system, in a London fox size financial system, uh, it's unfolded even in uh, the 17th century, focused on the stock of exchange of London and back of England. And very interesting how it changed the national debt of English state. Uh, recently, judging of national debt and generated debt, it's very, uh, uh, very, very uh, negotiated, very, um, uh, a lot of debate are about it. It's a debt or good or bad. Recently, in Hungary, it happened a crisis of debt uh, based on uh, uh, Swiss uh, uh, currency, uh, Swiss franc currency. It's a great crisis of the bank and, and uh, uh, 
personal uh, loaner's uh, system, it's uh, very, very problematic. But very uh, seminal to see uh, the situation that happened in England in the uh, modern time. If we are looking at uh, English national debt, it's continuously increased. It started uh, at the end of the uh, uh, 17th century, uh, a little bit less than uh, uh, 50 million. And to the beginning of the uh, uh, 19th century, it's a uh, lot of times uh, down and uh, half million. It's good or bad? It's good or bad? If we are looking under diagrams, it's unbelievable, unbelievable uh, increase during the 18th and 19th century. But if we are looking the structure of using of that, how used a state, how used a economic actor, that functioned successfully uh, in the formation of, uh, of uh, English national market. And if we would like to judge of meaning of national debt, this is the bill of industrial revolution. Because the debt may be good for market if invest efficiently. And in England, used efficiently the national debt. And national debt launched the procedure of industrial revolution. Okay.